If you have Bibles, open them to Genesis. We're in the first chapter. We're looking at day two, or what's called the second day. On your, in your notes, we're in the 13th lesson. Studying through the first 11 chapters of Genesis. Last time we looked at day one. Now we look at day two. Uh, this will be a two-part series. Today uh, we'll look at the second day water, and then next time we'll look at the second day expanse. Here we are in verse 6, 7, and 8. God said, watch four things that God does on day two. God said, or spoke, God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. God made the expanse, and he separated waters which were below the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse, and it was so. Now, how many things has God done so far? <laughs> uh, Horton, you're too good. Specifically, all right, God said, God made, God said, God made, God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, there was morning, a second day. Notice in day one, we have day one, now we're into second, third, fourth in a series, all right? So here's what we got right here. I want, that's a circle. We have the earth. Here's what we got so far. Verse 2. The earth is wrapped in darkness. which is wrapped in water and the Holy Spirit is hovering over it, protecting it. That's verse 2. Here's the earth. That's, that's the planet earth. It is wrapped in darkness, wrapped in water, protected by the Holy Spirit, wrapped by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's over it. You see that in verse 1? I mean verse 2. In day one, God dealt with the darkness. Remember, we talked great lengths about this darkness. That's, that's, that darkness is due to the fall of Satan. And that darkness becomes the nomenclature for his domain, like Colossians 1.13. We are all born into the domain of darkness, and you have to be rescued and transferred out of it. Colossians 1.13 into the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of the beloved son. And so there's a key word with that in, in uh, for day one. It's the word separated. It's in the hip field. Okay. Well, let's we'll just... Verse 3, God said, let there be light. There was light. God saw the light was good. God separated light from the darkness. God called the light day. The darkness he called night. In the night he called it evening. And in the day they called it morning. See the word. God separated the light from the darkness. That's day one. He separated the light from the darkness. And out of that comes light and darkness, comes uh, daylight, darkness, and you have evening and morning. Vocabulary words. Now we come to water, wrapped in water, agreed. Where's this water? This water is out of verse 2. Watch what he's going to do. He's going to do the same thing he's going to separate in Hiffield. 
Here we go. God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and it separated waters from the waters. Separated waters from the waters. Where's that, where's that waters? That's wrapped. That's where that's wrapping. So he's going to separate them. Just like he did darkness, he separated light and darkness. Now he's going to separate waters and waters. Yeah? And that's a hip field. The hip field is causative. We know that darkness and water, that, that, that's chaotic conditions of the earth. The only thing that kept that thing from just blowing apart was the Holy Spirit, the third member of Godhead, covering that whole situation, holding all of that in place until God begins to act upon it. This is verse 2. He act, the first time he acts, he acts on the darkness. The second time is on water, great. Okay. So, and that's a hip field, and that's causative. This is going to remain that way until God causes it to be changed. Now, in verse 2, this condition you see on the board means that the earth is uninhabitable. The earth is uninhabitable. That condition, the earth is uninhabitable, Isaiah 45, 18. So what God is doing is he's got to deal with these two things that came out of the fall of Satan. He's got to deal with this so that he, the earth can become inhabited. And we won't get to that point until we get after day three. We're working on the process, or God is. God is working on the process of changing the earth chaotic conditions into an orderly systematic condition that the earth can be inhabited. Are you with me? Remember that day one, two, and three, one, two, and three are called days of God because there is no solar system. There is no solar system until day four. These are days, they call them, the theologians call them days of God because there's no other days like them. If you think that the days that he's talking about are like the days that you live in, in a solar system, it's not. They, the only way they can define these days is that these are the days of God. There is, there is no circling of anything and, and having calendars and seasons and all that. None of that's in existence in day one, two, and three. As you and I know it in day four, five, and six. Okay, so here's what he's going to do. He's got to separate these two things out, right? He's going to separate out in the hip field right there to bring this chaotic order into order for inhabited. The earth's got to be inhabitable. Agreed? Okay. Well, four, five, and six. <laughs> you got to get to 4, 5, and 6 for it to happen. All right? Now, this water situation up here, in Job 37.10, on your paper, from the breath of God, ice is made, and the expanse of the water is frozen. See, this is where we believe there was an ice age. Most theologians believe that. Here's another thing that talks about this time and when the expanse goes in. When the expanse goes in, the expanse is going to separate the waters. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. But this period, prior to that, you should read Ezekiel 122. Not now, but later. 
It says that when the expanse was put in, it sparkled like ice or crystal. That's in that conversion period that we're talking about. Ezekiel 122, it's on your paper. The second day, I'm going to look at the water today, and I'm going to look at the expanse next week. No, Ezekiel. What's your paper say? Scratch it. It should be Ezekiel 122, not Isaiah. You won't find that in Isaiah. All right. Now, what we're going to look at today is the second day water. I'm going to deal with that. Point number one, the second day of restoration of creation consisted in the following four divine activities of God. God said, I'm mere, cal, and perfect. And then what he's going to do is he's going to make an expanse to separate the waters. It says, and this is important, God made. In verse 1, it says God created, and that's Barra, B-A-R-A. He creates something out of nothing except the character of God. But now we have Asa, A-S-A-H, and it means to create something out of something that's already been created. Are you with me? Well, that's just what it means. I mean, that's the difference between Barra in verse 1 and Asa on day 2, on the second day. Asa means to create something out of nothing. Bara means to create something. Ba Asa means to create something out of something. Bara means to create something out of nothing. Only God can do that. Okay? So, and that's a callum perfect. The word separated we had in day one. As a hip filled imperfect, we have it again. It's causative. God is the cause of separating the waters, just like God was the cause of separating the dark from the light. And then we have vocabulary we still use today. We, right? we call the day, day light, the night, night light. In fact, if you can't, when you get an artificial one, stick it in the wall and go to bed. <laughs> I don't know. You do if you have small kids, I can tell you. Uh, and uh, small kids and old kids, that's how that works. Now, what he's going to do is he's going to separ separate the waters from day two. Are you with me? What material do you think God used? God made the expanse. Agreed? God made the expanse out of something already created. Right? That's the word Asai. It means to create something out of something. It means something's already been created. He made it from what's been created so far. What's day one? Light. Da da. All right. And what what the expanse is going to do? He's going to make the expanse. The expanse is going to be made out of light. That's why it shines like crystal. Ezekiel, right? Ezekiel. Did I say Ezekiel 122? Yeah. All right. Now we got vocabulary again. See, we had vocabulary in day one. We got vocabulary on the second day. We have vocabulary. We have two words in vocabulary given to us. The word expand and the words heavens. Now, we did have heavens. God created the heavens and the earth in, in, in day one, but it's a blank. Now we get a distinction of the heavens. Okay? These waters, this expanse is going to be neat. So here's the earth. I, I, I know. That, this, that's the earth. And watch the expand, what the expanse is going to do. It's going to do that. That's the expanse. Notice in point number two, 
notice in point number two, on the second day, God made the expanse out of something already existence, i.e. the light of verse of day one. In the Vulgate, which is the Latin translation of the Bible, they call that the firmament. The, what they call the expanse is called the firmament. In the Septuagint, with the Greek translation of, of Genesis, it is translated a solid canopy. In the Hebrew transit, rakia, which is a, a fixed space for inhabitants of the earth. Are you with me? Here's what's important when he puts it there. Now he's dealing with water, but here's what you're going to have because we've got also the idea of heavens. So you've got this, and here's the earth. The expanse separates. Here's atmosphere. Birds fly, planes fly, atmosphere. We're talking about fixed space. What you have next is what we call outer space. This is called the first heaven, this is called the second heaven, and there is a third heaven, which was not affected at all on the second day. The only thing that was affected on the second day was right there. What he says happened, he separated the waters, the waters, he, the expanse, this right here, this is the expanse, he put waters above and he put water below, the expanse. Here's the earth, and you have this canopy a fixed space. You've got this space here where we live that makes Earth different than all the planets. This deal here is what makes the Earth a different planet than all other planets. The only thing that even resembles this is the third heaven, which wasn't affected at all. This is the throne room of God. This is where God is, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. When a believer dies, that's where he goes. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. This is what makes planet Earth, planet Earth. And this has got to be done before we get to day four, five, and six, which is the big deal for the human race. Here's the expanse. All I'm doing is I'm just reading the Bible to you. I've done nothing more than read the Bible. You need to read the Bible. You say, I read the Bible. No, 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 no. You read it wrong. <laughs> because here's what you don't do. You don't read and then ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand it. You, listen, you, this is where America has gone just absolutely ignorant. You don't read to learn. You just read to pass time. You know, when I was a kid going to school, if you got a spell, if you, we had spelling test. If you got a word wrong, you kept bringing it, you wrote that thing so many times, either on the blackboard or back at home, and you brought it back until you learned it. You know what people do today? They, if they don't understand it, they skip it. Tell me how you learn if you read a word, don't understand it, and you skip it, Tell me where that builds your, your vocabulary. I spent my whole time growing intelligently. That's up for grabs. With a dictionary in my hand. 
I never went to school without a dictionary. We had one in the schoolhouse, we had one in the home, and I carried a little one when they came out with pocket ones. Because if I didn't know a word, I'd better come back the next day and know that word and what it meant. Listen, you read the Bible, this, you read if you can't understand something, you skip it. Now listen, you've got the greatest teacher in the whole wide world lives inside of you. It's called the Holy Spirit of God. In John 14, 26, he will teach and recall. Did I have a word of prayer? I think I might need it. <laughs> if nobody else, I think I might need this. Let's have a word of prayer. If you need to confess sin, confess it. Mental attitude, sin, sins, tongue, overt sins, you know the drill. 1 John 1, 9, if I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me. The Holy Spirit is a great teacher. The greatest teacher you'll ever have lives inside of you every day of your life and wants to teach you the Word of God. So thankful for that exercise, Father, of John 14, 26 in my life. I pray for it over the congregation as we look at this on the second day, Father. Teach us what all of this means to our life. This is day one, two, and three. There's, been, there's nothing like it ever in the world. And we need to understand it so that when it comes to day four, five, and six, where we actually live with our feet on the earth, going fishing, going hunting, going to work, getting married, buying houses, selling houses, all this kind of stuff is day four, five. Here we are. We need to understand, Father, as best we can how this came into being for us on a grace basis. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's, let's go back. So the writers are trying to explain to you this expanse. You know, you know what the astronauts call that expanse? When they go through the, they go through the expanse. And they know when they go through it. They call it the thin blue line. And they know when they go through it. In fact, the civilians that have made the trip through the thin blue line also know it. It has an enormous impact on them when they go through the thin blue line. You know what that thin line blue that is? The expanse. It's called a firmament. It's called the canopy. And you know, they, they are staggered by it because you leave light to go into a darkness that is nothing like the darkness it originally was. But they all talk about it. They all talk about it when they go through the thin line of blue, the blue thin line. Well, anyhow, I'm sure many of you know that. The second day expanse res resolved the chaotic water problem of, of chapter 1, verse 2, agreed? That's what we're dealing with. It all, listen, and when that's taken care of, it, it resolves the, the Holy Spirit's ministry was to cover, day, cover the darkness and the water, right? We've, we've taken care of the darkness. As soon as we take care of the water, the Holy Spirit's no longer hovering over the earth. You understand that? Because he was there to preserve and protect. So that's a given for us. Point, th point three or wherever I am for. Wow, I'm just breezing through this stuff. All right. The second day expanse called the, the, the fixed space. You see why, why they, they, the, some do that? You got, you got a fixed space here, right? Under the canopy and one over it. We all know that planes fly under that and they can't fly over it. They got to have special operational ideas to get out over, to fly in the outer space. Agreed? You can't take an airplane up there. Yeah. 
So this, this is a big deal right there. That is a big deal. That's a big deal. The second day expanse idea at fixed space separated the waters of Genesis 1-2 into what's called above and below. Uh, above, above the expanse and below the expanse. God made the expanse and separated the waters, verse 7, which were below the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And we didn't have this phrase before, and it was so. We, we didn't have that in day one. You want to, care to pay attention to it, but you never, you, listen, you may discover it's not in every day. But when it is, you ought to note it. Hmm? Who said that? And so it was so. Who said that? All right? Moses wrote it, but who said it? Whose word is it? Man, I don't. Refer, I don't quote. I quote this. Moses wrote it though, didn't he? Genesis, you know the. But who said it is what's important. God said, right, and it covers six, seven, and eight. So when he says that, when he does something, it says something. It's like you don't. That, that's written in concrete. Of course, concrete. You know, this is better in concrete, isn't it? And so what do you say? And it was... It was so. He didn't do it with day one, but he did it with day two. Second day. The expanse was like a canopy spread out over the earth like a tent. Ryrie, in his footnote, talks about the Garden of Eden business. Apparently, God suspended a vast body of water vapors uh, uh, form over the earth, making a canopy that would cause conditions on the earth to resemble those of in a greenhouse. If you know anything about what you will. But when we get to the Garden of Eden, you're going to see quite a place. And the conditions are going to be different in the period with the expanse, Right? Because it's got water above and water below creating this. It's a perfect environment. When we get to when we when we get to Garden of Eden, it's going to be an amazing thing. Perfect environment. Yeah, everybody thinks they can get it now, but mm. you know what made it a perfect environment then? God made it. God made it that way. We had water above and water below. And I give it a greenhouse effect for the Garden of Eden. Point number five. Wow, I'm doing really good here. I'm going to get on time. The second day expanse separated this, the second heaven, outer space, water above, from the first heaven, atmosphere, and the water below. Agreed? I'm not asking for consent. I'm just, I'm just really saying, are you, are you following, are you following it? Look, 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 I, I know, listen, sometimes you go, I've never heard this before. I've still, I've, I've, I know. I know. That's why it's called learning. Isn't it wonderful to learn new things? Yes, I never studied the Bible. I don't learn something new. I have never. So, so we got, we, got, we got these two waters. We got water above it, above the expanse, right, in a fixed space. And we have water below the expanse in a fixed space. Agreed? No, I, I'm just saying that. Okay. However, it did not affect the third heaven. Do you understand that? Right. Here is the first heaven is down here. Here's the second heaven. Here's third heaven, right? Where do you go when you die? Third heaven. Third heaven. Guess where you pass through? 
when you just remember when you go through the thin blue line, you got I know. I just went through the expanse. And you will know it. You will know it because it's part of the word of God. Agreed? I didn't make this stuff up. I mean, you think I could sit down and make this stuff up? This would be so far out of mind, even though I carried a dictionary around with me. This is beyond that. And see, now he says, when I fixed the expanse, I numbered the heavens. See, he's got heavens. But now we know what he's talking about. In verse 1, it was just a concept. Now we actually have it, and they're, they're developed to inhabit the earth. The human being put human beings on the earth. I guess we are. Most of the time of every day, we're human, aren't we? We're human beings. We treat others similar, hopefully. Watch this. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 24. Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one, but into heaven itself. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about the third heaven. That's where he went back. This is where he came from. Now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. 2 Corinthians 12, chapter, verse 2. You know where Paul went when he, when, when he assumed that he had died? Went to the third. He says it. He, he calls it. Yeah, I went to the third heaven. He didn't say I went to heaven. He said I went to the third heaven. You know why? Because he went through the thin blue line. He went, oh, whoa! That is something. If those people back there knew what this was all about, and then out of space and into the third heaven, and go like, what a what 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 what? I think something like that. I'm thinking what I would do. Watch this now. This expanse is going to last ten generations of the human race with the water above and the water below. The water above and the water below is going to last 10 generations before the water above and the water below is affected conditions on the earth. Planet, earth. You know how I know that? Because I read Genesis 5. And I read Luke, the third chapter, 36 through 38. It lists 10 generations. Starts with Adam and goes to Noah. Noah? Noah? Genesis 6 through 9. Noah? What happened in Noah? What happened in the days of Noah? A flood. Of how much of the earth? All of it. Where did the water come from? The water from above and the water from below. Listen to this. I wrote it on your paper. Genesis 7, 11. Hey, they must have had, they had 7 11s back then. Who knew? The water above became known as the floodgates of the sky. And the water below became known as the fountains of the great deep bursting open. And it changed, listen to me, it changed, when we get there, we'll study it. It changed the entire geographics of the earth. We went from three continents to seven. And everything changed within the atmosphere. Oh, where are those green people when I need them? They listen. And it's going to be that way until the second coming of Christ. And then God is going to take us into the millennial age, which is going to be another super deal of atmosphere.
and conduct. You should be so thankful that your father, Abba Father, on this Father's Day is in charge of all of this and deserves to be honored as the super daddy of them all. If there's ever a Father Day, today's the day to honor God. He put all of this in existence for you and me. And this is a marvelous thing. For 10 generations, he let that roll on. And when we get there, we'll see why he put an end to it and established the, the, the earth that you and I live in. You know what we call this in theology? post Diluvian civilization. This group here, antediluvian, before the flood, you and I live after the flood, and there'll be another, another deal for the earth called the millennial age. And then we'll go to the new heaven and new earth, it'll be like, won't that be something? Imagine what that thing's going to be like. Boy, what that would be like. In a message on eschatology, if I say eschatology, you know what I'm saying? Second coming. Eschatology. The second coming of Christ. Peter is in a discussion on eschatology at the second coming of Christ. In 2 Peter, the third chapter, verses 5 and 6, he writes, And when they maintain this, talking about that, it escapes their notice. God coming. Where is God's coming? He hasn't come. Who believes he's going to come? All that. You're right. That's my interpretation of 2 Peter 3. All right? So it escapes their notice that by the word of God, this little baby here we carry around. That's pretty big, that one. I was going to, that's a big Bible. What's that? And then I saw a giant print. <laughs> yeah, right. It escapes their notice by the word of God. The heavens existed long ago. Verse 1. You know, Genesis 1.1. And the earth was formed out of the water by the water that's to be inhabited now through which the world at that time was destroyed, the flood, taking the water from two into the second day into Noah's flood, being flooded with water. The earth flooded completely with water. Hmm? Yet God, in his marvelous grace, had him build a boat. Well, Navy men don't like me to talk that way. A ship. That rescued eight people. God, in his marvelous grace, is always looking out for you and I. Why won't you believe that? He cares about your least problem today. He cares more than, than you do, and it keeps you awake. God is a magnificent Father. You should just be so joyful for that. He says, look, cast all your cares upon my son Jesus. Cast not, not just your sins. Listen, not just cast all your sins upon Jesus, cast all your anxieties, all your worries and frets, cast all that upon Jesus, my son, because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, all right, 6, 7, and 8. I mean, what a, what a wonderful Father's Day. 
I'm going to close with this, and then Willie's ask permission to speak for a moment. We'll give that to him. Psalms 104, verses 2 and 3. Cover thyself, talking about God, cover thyself with lights as with a cloak stretching out heaven like a tent curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the, wa in the waters, and he makes the clouds his chariot. He walks upon the wings of the wind. <laughs> yeah, poetic. Well, it should be. It comes from Psalms. We're going to have a word of prayer. The men are going to take the offering. While they're doing it, Willie's going to come and have a word. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for these that have come in attendance for study. We're getting there, Father. We're getting there. We want to be learners because learners become disciples and disciples become world changers. And it's in that order because the disciple means learner. I am thankful, Father, that people are desirous to be learners to be disciples so they can share their, their learning of the truth to other people. That we can be changers of humanity with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray today, Father, that we would fall in love with the Word of God. For within it holds all the secrets to our problems of our life. And not only ours, but those who have them that we come in contact with. And so it was so. And so it was so on the second day, Father, that we've looked at. Take this offering today, Father, and may we support the great work that's going on of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world through our missionaries that have boots on the field, for those, Father, that Rick and Jackie's ministry has affected and they have boots on the field, carrying the message forward. in heathen nations. Oh, don't, don't let us become a heathen nation, Father. May the church be bold in their discussion on what a person has to do to be saved. Such a simple message that sometimes we make it complicated. Christ died for our sins, was buried and raised from the dead to give us eternal life. And because he lives, we will live forever with him. Take this money, Father, today. Give us the courage to spend it on reaching the maximum number for Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.